Adobe Presenter offers some really easy settings to manage objects and slides in your e-learning courses. Let's see those settings. In uh, your PowerPoint presentation, uh, click the Adobe Presenter tab and under the Tools section, you'll find Settings and Slide Manager. First, let's look at the settings. So I'll click the settings button here and I get uh, the settings uh, dialog where I can modify the appearance, playback, quality and attachments for the presentation. And then uh, I have these application level settings, which uh, are uh, global settings, which can be applied to all the presentations I create uh, from now on. So let's look at the presentation level settings that we can do. So here you can give a title to your course. So uh, let's uh, give this course a title of say introduction to Adobe Captivate. Okay, And here you can add a short summary of what are the contents of this particular um, presentation. So now here, uh, this summary will not be visible to your learners. This summary will be visible only to the course administrators. And if you are deploying this course uh, to a connect server, the connect server administrators will also be able to see this summary. So it is for internal reference for the people who are working on this course and this summary will not be uh, visible to the learners. Let's go to the next section uh, and here uh, we have some playback options so you can set whether you want to have an auto play on start so if you on loading if you want the course to start playing automatically this uh, option should be checked which is a default option right now and uh, if you want uh, the learner to click the play button to move forward and not auto play leave this unchecked. The next option is loop presentation. So if you want the presentation to keep looping uh, as soon as it, it reaches the last slide, it should go and play the first slide again. Keep this checked and it will loop your presentation. Next is include slide number and outline. So if you want the slide number to be visible in the outline, keep this checked. Next is pause after each animation. So if you've added some animations uh, to your course and you want uh, to pause after each animation and want the learner to click the play button, to move forward, keep this option checked and it will allow you to do that. Next is use PPTX slide time. So here uh, by default, what a uh, presenter does is it calculates uh, the duration of the objects and the slide and uh, gives you a a set timing here but if you want uh, if you've uh, given some uh, triggered animations and uh, uh, some settings where you want the animation to start after a particular uh, you know time duration you can check this option so it will use the pptx slide time that uh, ppt uh, has defined and it will give you that particular time alternately you can uh, also change the default duration of the slide by default presenter has five seconds of uh, slide duration you can change it to whatever you feel like also there is an option of restoring defaults if you've made some changes and want to get back to uh, the default state just click this and it will bring you back to the default state of settings Let's go to the quality and here, uh, here uh, you can select which uh, publish you are talking about. So if you, uh, if you want a desktop copy of your, uh, of your course, you can just go and select my computer and uh, do those settings. And similarly, you can go and change uh, settings for uh, PDF and for connect as well. Okay. So here uh, you can set whether you want uh, the published audio quality to be a CD quality, near CD quality, low bandwidth. So it all depends on what is the bandwidth uh, uh, of internet connectivity that your students are getting. If they are on low connectivity, then it's it's better to have a, say a FM quality of audio rather than going for a CD and a near CD quality. So it all depends on what connectivity your students are having. Next is uh, whether you want the image quality to be high, medium, low or lossless. So you have to decide whether you want the file size to be high. If, uh, if you can manage a high file size, you can go with the high image quality. And if you feel that uh, if the file size is more and uh, it will take more time for the learners to load the course, go for a low uh, image quality. So this is a decision you have to make.
next is control preloading so um, here you can uh, have this option of uh, disable preloading for embedded flash content so if you want the preloading not to work for it just check this option next is use these settings for new presentation so if you want uh, uh, the current settings uh, to be a global setting for you and you don't want to go and change it for each and every or every option you can just go and check this option and uh, that will apply to the uh, to all the presentations that you uh, create and publish from now on uh, again we have the restore defaults button which restores the default options let's uh, go to the next uh, option here which is attachments so with presenter courses uh, you can attach a lot of uh, uh, attachments in the form of say a handout or a summary document or if you want uh, to provide some more information to your learners you can add those documents as uh, an attachment to your presenter courses here's how you can uh, attach uh, the attachments and uh, click the add button here and it will give you an opportunity to name the attachment so I'll, let me just name it as handout and then you can go and either um, add a file or you can link a file so this link uh, will work only for the PDF documents so you can link PDF documents uh, from presenter uh, rest everything you can you can put as a file so you can add a PPT you can add an Excel sheet you can add a word document you can add a PDF so uh, all these types of files and many more can be added uh, into this attachment section so to add the file you just have to click this um, folder icon uh, navigate to the place where you have the attachment and click open that document will be attached to this particular presentation click ok and it will appear here so next time if you want to edit it out or you can you you have to delete it just click this button and it will allow you to modify these attachments next is uh, the application level settings that we do and that those are the global settings so here you can go and add presenters for your Adobe presenter course you can add uh, the information related to those presenters by clicking the add button here once you click that add button you get an opportunity to write uh, the uh, give the details for those presenters so let me just add my details here mm. Okay, and okay and for photo I'll just go and browse and I will pick one of my pictures and add them here I can also add my company logo here so um, I've added Adobe logo here I can provide my email address and then I can give a short biography of uh, mine over here so let's uh, leave this uh, blank for now and uh, I can set it as a default uh, presenter so if you if you're creating all your presentations and you are the presenter by default you can set this as default presenter or you can just leave it unchecked for now let's uh, keep it as default and you can add many more presenters here so let's add one more uh, presenter so I'll just name it as presenter 2 and here evangelist and photo let me just add uh, the logo here and email is email at adobe.com okay and i've added this so you can add as many number of presenters you want and you can set one of them as your default uh, presenter you can easily edit and delete these presenters as well uh, let's go to the next one. So here if you are uh, deploying your courses to your connect uh, server This is the place where you will add the details related to your server all, all you have to do is click add and here you have to name the server and give the URL for your uh, Connect server here. Okay, I'll just cancel it for now and uh, You can give the audio source whether you want to get the audio from microphone or line it and check this option if you want to be prompted to set the microphone level before recording next is preview so here you can define whether you want uh, to preview the uh, slide next five slides or next 10 slides or next 
uh, four slides so this is this is where you will define uh, how many slides you want to preview I'll show you where you will be using this so uh, let's set it to five and click OK this appears in this section when uh, in this fourth section which is preview next five slides so whatever you number you define in this settings panel appears in that section so let's change it to seven and see what happens and uh, when I come here it changes to the seven slides so this is uh, whatever you are comfortable with you change this number to that particular number okay so these were the global settings let's look at the slide manager now so when you click the slide manager you get an option to edit uh, the ma major details of uh, how your slides will be looking like the main information that's added here is presented by so here when you click none you can go and select the presenter you want to add so maybe I want to add Pooja here I can go and add uh, different presenters for different slides if uh, there's a joint presentation by a lot of people you can do that also what you can do is you can select all the slides and then change the presenter for that let let me show that to you a little later let's cover all these sections and then we will go to that so next is navigation name so if you're not happy with the uh, the slide name that's auto generated from the slide titles you can go and change it to uh, maybe I just want to change it to introduction okay and uh, that will that will allow you to use this name on the sidebar instead of this name so if you have a few edits uh, or you want to be more descriptive or you want to make it a little short you can use this navigation name panel and uh, this particular name will be overridden by the navigation name next is the go to section where uh, you if uh, by default uh, presenter has a linear navigation but if you want the learner to go to any other slide from here you can set that go to action over here next is advanced by user so by default uh, as soon as the slide duration will be over the learner will be taken to the next slide so if you don't want that uh, behavior to happen for one or all of your slides you can just go and change it to uh, to yes and for that they will have to click the play button or the next button to move to the next slide next is lock slide so if you want uh, the learner to compulsorily visit the entire slide and not to skip that slide at all keep it locked this is uh, generally used for compliance based courses where you want the learner to go through the content um, and each and every slide so that's uh, that's the place where you will be using this feature next is multimedia so if you've added some audio video or animation to your slide this uh, uh, option will be highlighted and it will show you that there is an audio video or uh, animation added to this particular slide now let's go to the uh, option where you can make um, general edits for your slide so all what I'll do is I will click the select all button that will give me an edit option so I, when I click edit I get an option to change the presenter name to lock all the slides and advance by user so generally it's seen that uh, whenever you have a presentation or a course it's generally done by or conducted by one uh, presenter so th this is a place where you can set every uh, you know for all the slides you can have one presenter here you have an option to lock all the slides and uh, so you don't have to do it one at a time and go and do it for all the slides you can do it for all the slides from here and even advanced by user so if you want uh, the learner to click next to go to the next slide after reading the entire stuff you can select this option and make it convenient for you to work with and I'll click OK and all those changes will be implemented into the slide manager section that's all for today and I hope you find the settings and slide manager very simple to work with and it makes your e-learning uh, creation process easier. Thanks for watching this tutorial.